Okay, today I want to just talk to you briefly about one of my favorite way to find long tail keywords. And first of all, I am not an SEO specialist by any shape or form, uh, but I've just learned a lot of things along the way as I've been blogging throughout the years. Uh, so there are a lot of things that you can do to find keywords for your blogs. You can use different keyword tools. You can use incredibly expensive tools like Ahrefs, which I think starts at about 120 a month. Uh, there are a variety of other uh, less expensive keyword tools that you can use. The thing that I wanna really make sure that you understand is when you use tools like this, let's say you decide to subscribe to Ahrefs for a month and find a lot of long tail keywords using the tool. That's a great way to use it, uh, but you're finding the same keywords everybody else is finding as well. So I like to just go the old fashioned route, which is slower, but it's cheaper. In fact, it's so cheap that it's free, and that's just using Google Autocomplete. So what's the first thing that I do? So the first thing that I do is I think about my blog niche and what I wanna write about and I think about little things about the niche that are idiosyncrasies. What would be some of these questions that people would have about the particular topic um, that they might search for in Google? So as you can see on the screen, I just sat down and I'm, I've mountain biked for years. So I thought, well, what are some questions that I think mountain bikers have um, these are definitely long tail keywords, but they're ones that have occurred to me. And so things like, can you mountain bike without suspension? Uh, what makes a mountain bike front end twitchy? Uh, clipless or flats for enduro riding. So these are clipless or flat pedals. Why are mountain bikes so expensive? Is mountain biking hard on the knees? So you can see where I'm going with this. You think about your topic and then just start generating a big list of questions that you think people would be asking about the topic that you're writing about. So here's the key thing that we're gonna look for to see, does it make sense to write about this long tail keyword? First of all, you wanna make sure, is anybody even searching for this? Um, so let's start off with this first keyword and we'll go into Google. Make sure that you're using an incognito browser. So when you're pulling these search returns back, um, with this autocomplete tool, none of them are things that you've searched for before. So that's why you use a private or incognito browser. So what was that first one? Can you mountain bike without suspension? So can you mountain bike? See, right here, can you mountain bike without suspension? Because this is showing up before you, you've even typed it in, um, you know that somebody else has searched for this. So if you click on that, now we want to look and see what kind of, what are we getting back here? So there are articles about this. And what we're really looking for, are there any forums? So this is good. Bike forums, Quora. So right away, you've got at least two different, you've got two different uh, forums showing up in the top 10. So this would be a topic that I would write about, definitely. I think that a good SEO optimized article on can you mountain bike without suspension uh, could rank in the top 10 here. Now, you do have to also consider the age of your domain, uh, how many blog posts you've written. So if you've only written one or two blog posts in your blog, uh, this makes it more difficult to rank. Now, Decline Magazine, it, it's been around for a while, so it's got high, you know, a high domain authority. If you're a new blog, you won't have a high domain authority. Um, so those are all considerations uh, and are ranking factors. 
So let's go to, what, what was the next one? Mountain bike front end twitchy. And the reason I thought about that is there's something called mountain bike handlebar roll and you adjust that. And if you don't adjust it correctly, it can make the front end of your mountain bike twitchy. So I wanted to see, is anybody else searching for this? So I have space and put a T and then a W. Keep going. Yep. Mountain bike front end twitchy, twitching. So same, same premise. Mountain bike front end twitch, but I'm going to do twitchy. See, twitchy when riding. So let's just go ahead and go with that long tail keyword right off the bat. Mountain bike reviews forum. Single track world bike forum. Vital mx.com forum, Reddit, bike radar forum, bike forum, stack exchange. This one, you should be able to write an SEO blog post, SEO optimized blog post, and maybe even rank number one with a featured snippet. So let's go to the next one. And I think you're, you're beginning to see, you know, how this works. So clipless or flat pedals for enduro. So some people are interested in this. I know I was interested to find out or anybody, is anybody riding an enduro mountain bike with clipless pedals? Are they asking about that? Now, if you don't know anything about mountain biking, this may not make sense, but just bear with me. Clipless or, so here we go, clipless or flat pedals for gravel bike. That could be an interesting one to write about too. Let's just keep going. Here we go. Clipless versus flat pedals, enduro. Let's see how this, what we get here. There are some YouTube videos right off the bat. There we go, pink bike, pink bike forum, singletracks.com forum. So there are two forums essentially in the top 10. So when I see that, I know that's something that I want to write about. So let's go on to the next one. Why are mountain bikes so expensive? So go to an incognito browser. Why are mountain right away. Why are mountain bikes so expensive? People are searching for this. Let's see what we get back. Reddit, Quora. So that's good. Right in the top 10, you've got two forums. So that's definitely one I would write about. Let's go to the last one. Is mountain biking hard on the knees? is mountain biking hard right there, boom. Now, obviously I've looked these up ahead of time um, because I wanted to see if it was something that I could show you as, as examples. But here we go, Reddit, mountain biking with a somewhat bad knee. Mountain bike reviews form hard on the knees. So right away, two forums in the top 10, that is worth writing about. If you um, can write a credible article on mountain bike, is mountain biking hard on the knees? So the key thing here is you can take a base keyword like container gardening so container gardening for beginners, container gardening classes near me. This one might be good. I don't know anything about gardening. But what I generally do is, even if it's a topic that I understand and know about, I also look at these people also ask because the the PAA results sometimes take me to 
uh, a topic that is easy to rank for. So how do I start a cheap container garden? Well, let's see what it says. So I'm not finding any forums, but my point is if I went to container gardening classes near me, pulled that up and I found forums somewhere in the top 10, I'd write about it. You just need to put in a base keyword like, I fly fish, so fly lines, fly lines explained. So I'll, I, I might go there and look through here and see, are there any forums popping up for this? Now, off, right off the bat, I'm not seeing any. So then I go to the people also ask, how do I know what fly line to use? Or even this one might even be better. What do fly line numbers mean? And then I go down to where it's to this search term and click on it. And I scroll down and I look to see, are there any forums? In this case, there isn't. So is it faster to buy a tool like Ahrefs? It might be, but I find a lot of very underserved keywords by using the Google autocomplete feature in a Google incognito browser and searching this this way. Uh, and, you know, just another tip too, if you're even looking for a new blogging niche, see if there are a lot of forums for that niche. If there are, this is gonna be great for informational keyword type blog posts because you can peruse those forums and find a lot of these questions which you can then take, make a list of them and drop them into a Google incognito browser and do just what I was doing here and uh, see uh, if anybody's searching for that. And if they are, there are some articles to write about. So that's how I find, this is how I find about 90% of the articles that I write about. Uh, it's free, it's easy to do, and hopefully this has helped you out. Until next time, take care.